Thank you all for joining this session. Um, I also thank you very much to the European Privacy Association to invite me to talk about uh, data protection issues uh, in the um, uh, cloud computing uh, scenario applied to e-health. Um, I'm actually a lawyer um, and I work in Milan for Becker and McKenzie, an American law firm, and I'm specialized in uh, uh, information technology legal issues. Um, being a lawyer, I enjoyed very much so far the presentations. First of all, because uh, it seems that uh, there are a lot of people working to make this work better, healthier, more secure. Uh, but being a lawyer, I also enjoy the presentation because they bring about data protection or privacy issue, as you want to call it. There is actually a technology that is coming, uh, coming out uh, very fast on the market that is the cloud computing technology that is even uh, announcing this kind of uh, legal issue. And this is what actually I'm going to talk about. Um, in the last four months, I have been busy uh, with a working group uh, organized by ENISA on the cloud computing risk assessment, and I'm one of the selected uh, legal consultants. And um, we work by making different scenarios. One of these scenarios uh, that we analyzed is the e-health scenario. So that's why I'm here, to share with you the preliminary findings of our study. Uh, my presentation will be very practical, very pragmatic. Uh, um, basically, we are going to um, check out what's the e-health scenario. Then uh, I will point out the legal issues. Uh, focus on privacy, and then I try to give you some solution uh, to tackle this problem. The e-health scenario. Um, actually, you will see it on the screen. Uh, um, we uh, thought about uh, um, a scenario where the patient are remotely controlled by um, a mobile um, device that brings uh, patient data to uh, a center, a laboration center, where professionals will uh, analyze the data, uh, talk about that, and possibly give an input back to the patient. Um, actually, all the service in this e-health scenario, we presume to be uh, running on a federated cloud computing uh, uh, infrastructure. Um, so. Moving on, which are the legal issues? Uh, there is not just a privacy and data protection issue. There is also a confidentiality issue. Think about uh, the know-how that will circulate uh, uh, in the cloud, uh, thinking about uh, patient records or uh, the knowledge, the know-how related to healthcare service. Uh, think about uh, the intellectual property, copyrighted materials like paper, um, think about professional negligence. If something goes wrong in the cloud or if the service uh, is interrupted or the data are not available, then uh, the service provided to the patient uh, uh, will not be up to the expectations and possibly cause damage. And if it causes damage, then the e-health uh, provider will be held uh, liable for negligence, for example. Um, think about the outsourcing services and changing of control. When you decide to go cloud, you choose uh, your cloud provider because you trust it, because uh, you think it has a fair data protection uh, policy, because you think it's secure. Um, but what happens if we are in a federation of clouds where one cloud provider give, uh, actually cooperate with other cloud providers or simply decide to outsource the services to other contractors, then maybe you want to know that. And maybe you don't want the cloud provider to do that because you don't, do not trust them. Focus on privacy. Um, I'm talking about, um, I, I'm talking from the European perspective. So we have the Data Protection Directive. As you see on the screen, it's pretty old. Currently is under revision. So hopefully in a um, in few months we will have some new regulatory system. Um, most important thing is to understand when the directive applies. It basically applies when the processing of data is made by 
the data contro a data controller that is established in a member state territory. So we will see it afterwards in the next slide. If you think about the scenario, and if you think about uh, the health service provider, he will be the data controller. If he is established in Europe, then the data protection directive will apply. It also applies uh, if the data controller is established outside the European Union but uses uh, um, technological equipment to process the data in the European Union. So that's very important. When the directive applies, mainly when the data controller is established in the European Union. Meaning that the place of processing of the personal data or the habitual residence of the data subject are not relevant from the data perspective point of view. What I have heard so far, it's a lot of concern about that, but it doesn't really matter. Let's define what is a personal data. Personal data is basically any kind of information that is directly or indirectly related to a person. What is a sensitive data? A sensitive data is um, actually a data that is more, let's say, sensitive uh, for the data subject, let's say, uh, health-related data, as we are in the healthcare scenario, or religious, philosophical, whatever, but think about health data are mainly sensitive data, meaning that if you want to process those data, you have to comply with a more stringent regulatory framework. What does processing mean? Basically, any operation carried out on the data, you will see a list of it, collection, recording, organization. So in our <laughs> health scenario, we have definitely a processing of data and sensitive data. Very important to understand who is the controller, who is the processor. The controller is actually the one who decides what to do with the data. The processor is actually the entity that processes the data on behalf of, of, of the controller. What does it mean if we go, oh, yeah. Actually, in our scenario, the controller, as I said before, will be the e-health service provider because it collects the data and decides how to use the data, mainly to try to find a medication for the patient. And the cloud provider will most likely be a, a processor, actually an external processor. External meaning not within the data controller organization, which means transfer of data. We will see it afterwards. That brings about a lot of issues. Uh, but anyway, around this point, uh, we need to have more clarification because if we look at the directive, it's not very clear about who is going to be in this kind of setting, the controller and the processor. So we really hope uh, that the Article 29 Working Party, which is actually, um, let's say, um, all the data protection authorities in Europe all together will try to clarify the matter. In our scenario, the data subject will be the patient. The controller most likely will be the e-health service provider, and the external processor will be the cloud computing service providers. What does it mean? The controller is the one who will be liable. The controller is the one who has to comply with duty and obligations. The controller is the one who has to assure, to some extent, that the data processor will also comply with those duties and obligations. And this brings quite a lot of issues if you think about rel the relationship between controller and processor, between the e-health service provider and the cloud computing service provider. Let's have a look at the slide. There are, in our directive, there are several principles. For example, you have to process the data in the lawful way. What does it mean? It means that the controller has to guarantee that not only the controller itself, but also the, professor, the, the processor will process the data in a lawful way and stick to the scope of the processing and try to minimize the data that, uh, that processes. Information notice and consent, that's another pillar of the data protection directive. You have to inform the data subject of the processing that you are going to carry out with uh, his or her data. And you have to also have the consent of the patient if you want to process the data most of the time. And definitely if you want to transfer